Dr. Paul, we've got the cutest baby. We're gonna see some little things, but they're kind of interesting. So let's go take a look. Oh, oh. So this little one is two months old, right? Uh-huh. Okay, and what are the concerns today? Um, she's got a boogery eye. It's okay. kind of pink and puffy. Yeah, it looks like it's her right eye. Yeah. yeah. That started on sa Saturday or Sunday. So um, four to five days ago. Well, I'm noticing just an incidental little mark there yeah. on, the, on the bridge of the nose there between the eyes. We thought it kind of looked there like birth? A, Yeah, we thought it looked like a little upside down heart. Yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. Either it's a tiny developing hemangioma, which I don't think so, could be, or it's just a very common thing called a nevus flamus, which is just a little birthmark, and that's a common spot for it. She tends to look that way, doesn't yeah. she? So that's a condition called torticollis, where perhaps she was positioned in the womb that way. Okay. By gravity, if I try to see if the head will go, she resists. Look at that. She's still trying to to have, it's really hard for the head to go this other way, all right? I want to talk about infants because we've been looking at a baby who had torticollis. I see this all the time and it can affect feeding. Think about what birth is doing to that poor little body. You're scrunched in the womb and then you are forced out a narrow canal. It's traumatic and while sure babies are quote designed to handle it so many babies come up with just spinal tension and that kind of tension that that just those fussy babies those colicky babies those babies who are having trouble with feeding trouble with latch it may just be spinal tension and torticollis that can be addressed quite simply with a good pediatric body massage or two or three or several. But generally it, it resolves very nicely with gentle body work. So there you have it. That's my tip today on torticollis. That is a hemangioma. So this is slightly raised, a very vascular, meaning it's an overgrowth of blood vessels. And it's a harmless little birthmark also. What you do? What you do? You really gotta eat, don't you? Oh my goodness. Hi. Hi. What you doing? You're doing a great job, by the way. So that eye's a little more swollen than the other. And when I hide there, when I pull that down, you can see that redness. It's beefy red compared to this one, which is much less. Oh, yeah. I did it there. We would call that a pink eye, okay. uh, which is layman's term for conjunctivitis. Okay. Pink eye or conjunctivitis can be allergic, which I okay. think you're wondering if you have that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, both your eyes are a little irritated, yeah. you were telling me. Uh, when it's both eyes and it's not so beefy red and it's more of a watery discharge, not pus, mm -hmm. that's more allergic-like okay. or even viral. When it gets more pussy and beefier red, we tend to think it's likely bacterial. Okay. And you know, since you're breastfeeding, breast milk in the eye can sometimes do it. I've been spraying her. You've been doing that. Good, <laughs> good job. Down. Good job. So that's probably how you've kept it from getting any worse because okay. it's really mild right now. Yeah. I'm going to write you an antibiotic eye drop okay. that you can also use. And then as for the birthmarks, the probable nema, nevus flamus and the hemangioma, which we'll try to see if you can get a better look at. Yeah, that one's definitely grown. Hemangiomas grow for the first, I would say, usually <laughs> year or two. It'll get purplish and then you'll start to see it's almost like disappearing, involuting. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, you might have somebody say, oh, we can cut that off. No. Yeah, I was gonna the, say, I thought they were harmless. They're harmless and they shrink away. Okay. Did you know that hemangiomas are actually quite common and almost always completely harmless? But there's this rare situation where sometimes it can be a real issue. Actually, two situations. Number one, if it's in a place where it's gonna always get rubbed and break open and bleed, that can be a real issue. You might have to have that child have laser therapy to get that thing to shrink so it doesn't keep bleeding. The other that I've only read about, never seen, and remember I've been doing pediatrics in a busy practice for 35 years, is when the hemangioma is somewhere near your airway. So you might have a presentation of a child who's always hoarse or who's, um, raspy uh, or progressively having trouble breathing as remember hemangiomas grow they can be present usually at birth but then they start to grow significantly over the first six to twelve months of life and as that happens if it's near an airway you could have a problem so 
I, like I said, I've never seen it, but it's always in the back of my mind if I've got a raspy or something going on respiratory-wise that's just getting worse and worse instead of better. Could be a foreign body, but it could also be a hemangioma. So there you go. Oh, baby. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Any questions? Um, no. I mean, just the eye drops for her eye, I guess. Yep. Okay. We'll get that written. Thank okay. you for letting us film. Yeah, of course. Thanks for oh. watching. I'm Dr. Paul. Oh, honey. Oh, <laughs> you are not gosh. very happy right now. No.